Good afternoon. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of Donna's Edge Talk Show, where truth matters. Thank you so much for watching every day, Monday through Friday, from 1 to 3 p.m. Central. I get to ride home with you in the afternoon. Again, it's always a lot of fun. You can find us on the radio, icradio.media, and you can also find us on television, channel 182, on Charter Communications, Abundant Television, found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. And don't forget the podcast at thenewscasters.com. That's the Newscasters Studio. You can also download the app now that's available. I've just downloaded it myself. Brand spanking new. Just look for Newscaster Studio and you'll be able to do that. So you can listen anytime you want to on your cell phone. As a matter of fact, I listen to a lot of stuff on my cell phone as well, you know, whether that be through Facebook or any of the social media sites. But I love the podcast being right there for Apple and for Android. Today we are going to talk about herbs and I'm going to talk to you about mint. I absolutely love mint. So let me show you some that we have right here um, in my little apothecary. And this is what mint looks like. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. And it's I'm telling you, the, the fragrance on this is captivating. I really love the smell. And I use this for a tea. You can put these in little sachet bags. You can do all kinds of wonderful things with this mint. I'm going to show you. I'll take you out to my... What, no, into my, I call it the White House. It's a greenhouse. It has white covering and everything on it. But I'm going to take you out there and let you take a, just take a look at what it's like to propagate. And because I have seeds, I've planted seeds. And then um, I also propagate. And I mean, that's just free flowers for you right there, free plants. So let's go ahead, quick video, and I'll show you how that happened. And then I'll be right back. I'm back, sun greens and all. So what I want to do, I'm in the greenhouse again. I wanted to show you how you can propagate. Okay, from just a clipping off of something, like I did on this one right here. Now this is mint, and this is actually propagated, and I actually have two plants in there. So again, if you have a problem with mice, maybe either outside or inside, maybe you have chickens. That's, they all kind of come out of the woodwork for chickens because they want their chicken feed. So I love mint. Rats, mice hate the fragrance of mint. So anyway, I've got some more that I'm going to propagate and I'm going to put it in something. So let's just go ahead and I hope I don't bump you too much. I'm going to move this down so you can see what I'm doing here. And hopefully this is going to be a good shot. Okay, now first of all, I like peat moss. And I went on ahead and put some dirt together. Hope you can see it. So this is some dirt that I put together, and I'm going to go on ahead, I got, this is a piece of mint right here. And so we're going to go ahead and put that into this little box right here, into the planter, and I'll show you how to do that really quick. doesn't take long at all. Okay, and I usually use my hands on everything, but I'll go on ahead and show you how you can do it this way. Make sure you have the peat moss and your gardening soil, make sure you've got that all together, mixed very well together. So go ahead and put some right in here. Now this is something that I've also learned. Um, by the way, I encourage you to take the master gardening classes and through whatever county you live in. Now what you want to do, because I learned so many great things, you want to go down into the, the uh, container like this and just kind of press down the edges because I really want that to have a good tight feel around the edges. And that's also going to help you when you're watering the plant. So I'm going to add a little bit more. This wonderful, wonderful dirt and compost that I've had for the past couple of years, I highly recommend it. Okay, so I've got it down the way I want it. There's a little bit of a, of a kind of a little hill right here, but we're going to keep it here for a reason. Okay, now what I'm going to do um, I've already cut it, but I'm going to show you some things you can do. What you're looking for on this beautiful mint right here, you'll be able to make a plant out of this. Let's say you're at a friend's house and she has a plant you would love to have. Just get, ask her, ask permission first, don't just do it, and just ask for just a tiny little cutting. Now, I have taken my fingernail, you can use a knife, whatever you want to, and so I've taken some of that outside skin off right there. Then what I'm going to do, by the way, this is the rooting compound I use right here. And, and I love this stuff. Now you can get it in a gel form. And this stuff lasts like absolutely forever. So what I'm going to do, I'll go ahead and dip it. It only takes a small amount. That's all I've got to have. 
Okay, then I'm taking my little planter right here. I'm going to put a hole in it through my finger. Not a big hole, but just enough. And then I'm going to go ahead and plant this. And um, what I'm doing, hope you can see, it's so much sun out here, so I don't know if you can see what I'm doing or not, but then I'm going to go ahead and press down in here. So you can see what I've done. I planted it, but now you've got to have some water. And I collect rainwater as much as possible, and I put it in little containers or whatever. But when you, you don't want to douse it with water because you're going to drown it, and you're going to create root rot. So I'll just go ahead. Look at that. It's loving this water. And in just about a month, you don't want to transplant this into something bigger until you know the roots look awesome. So here we go. And I'm just hoping you can see what I'm doing. With the sun green you saw I had just a few <laughs> minutes ago. Okay, and I'm going to press it down just again, just a little bit more. And look at that. I'm going to be rooting a cutting off of something. You should never buy plants but one time. Or if you have friends who are gardeners, you can get just tiny little cuttings from them. So that's all you do. Okay, thanks for watching. We're going to talk about a couple more things when we get back. So you can see just how easy that is. Very, very easy. Now, when you water the plant, make sure you don't drown it. Okay, you can't use too much water. Too much water is actually worse than having not enough water. So you can gently touch it. And if you notice, it's, it just kind of dirt just kind of goes down just a little bit. Then you can go ahead and water it again. I water mine about every couple of three days. But again, it all depends on the humidity and that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and talk about mint and why mint is so good for you. I'm smelling this right now it is absolutely wonderful now if you live out in the country like we do um, you have chickens and you have things like that you're going to see that you're going to attract rats and so there's you don't want to get that started but there's a couple of things you can do and I have to tell you this rats and mice do not like the smell of mint so if you want to go ahead and place some in your garden this coming spring when you're ready to start your planting season, you'll also find that that mint right there, when you have it growing in the garden, you're going to get rid of a lot of those pesky rats, rabbits, and that kind of thing as well. But let's talk about the health benefits of mint and what that's going to do for you and a lot of health benefits. So first of all, I want to familiarize you with what they are, what the mint plant really is. Now, it's the sixth or the seventh largest of the flowering plant families. Now the most common and popular mints for growing are peppermint and I can it smells so good. Native spearmint, scotch spearmint, and corn mint, also apple mint. So those are the many different things about mint. Now let me tell you this, if you're going to put mint in your garden, I would try to put it in some kind of contain it just a little bit because mint likes to take over the entire garden and I'll tell you I, I, I found out about that many years ago and I was a lot younger I went on ahead and planted some mint chocolate mint and that's this heavenly so I went on ahead and planted some of that um, in a little side of side of my yard before I knew it mint was everywhere and so it, it tends to jump too so if you especially if you have chickens in your yard they're going to be scratching around that they may rustle up a leaf somehow and somehow it can propagate and get into the ground, especially if you have a lot of rain. And so that's just, you know, one of the downfalls of mint. But other than that, I love it. Okay, now the most uh, popular, we talked about the mint types, but mint provides most of our common culinary herbs. You know, who doesn't like ice cream with chocolate and mint in it? It's really good, especially homemade ice cream. It's just to die for. Now, culinary herbs such as your basil, your oregano, uh, rosemary. I grow a lot of rosemary, sage, thyme, and summer and winter savories. Plus, there are dozens, maybe hundreds, basically, of traditional um, medicinal herbs, not to mention many, many aromatics that you can use in flavorings and perfumes and in cosmetics. Now, you'll also find mints among the favorite landscaping plants. But like I said just a minute ago, be very careful. You want to think of salvias, um, your lavenders, the bee balms, hyssop, and your Russian sage. Now, all summer, they produce a nectar-rich blossom, which attracts your bees and your beneficial pollinators, along with an occasional hummingbird or two. Now, we are beekeepers, and I love keeping my mint any kind of herb, the, the bees love it. 
Absolutely. So if you're a beekeeper, whether you want a garden or not, think about planting some of the herbs outside of the beehives. Okay, now a favorite in my um, garden also is the red bee balm and it seeds itself all over the place, makes a good cut flower, and it serves as a tasty tea to boot. Okay, now, many if not most of the mint family members contain strongly aromatic oils. Now, think of, of lavender, and then also your rosemary, your basil, the thyme, and the sage, and so that's how you can use those also for seasoning. Nothing is better to me and um, say your cornbread, you have your Thanksgiving, you're going to have your, uh, well, whether ham or turkey or whatever, and then your dressing, my cornbread dressing, got to put some of that fresh sage in there. All right, back to mint. Okay, now here are the 12 uses for mint leaves. We'll get started with some of those, then we'll go into a commercial break. Okay, food. We all know about the pear mint. They're especially good culinary mints, ideal for chopping into salads, you can also sprinkle it over fruit, combined with basil or cilantro to make mint pesto. And that's super good with those chips. And also a couple of tablespoons of fresh chopped mint to your peas, to your green beans, your carrots, your cauliflower, or your zucchini. And that's going to really create minted vegetables. Now let's talk about drinks. Okay, freeze a few trays of strong mint tea. Then you can use those ice cubes for cooling summer drinks. Add those mint leaves to cubes, and I like to do that. Then add that to your iced tea or to your fresh lemonade. Now, tea. Why are you going to buy mint tea when it's so easy to make? And this is what I brought to you when we first started today's show. And just take a look at that. And uh, really easy to do. You'll go ahead and gather up those mint leaves, wash them off, let them dry really good, and you can you can actually get stems and just kind of put them upside down like sometimes you'll see right here in my background what i like to do is put those into my food dehydrator and just as many as you want to now you've got to make sure they're really dry okay and a lot of people get confused about that they think they're you know taking away some of the some of the benefits of the the mint leaves when they do that but you're not so the easiest way you can do it leave them on the stems and then go ahead and put those in your food dehydrator. And then when they are completely dried, it can take hours to do that. I suggest you put those on a low heat on your food dehydrator. And then you'll take that out of the dehydrator and then just crumble them up with your hands. Give them just a few minutes to kind of get to room temperature. And then you'll just go on ahead and crumble those up in your hands. And this is what you wind up with right here. Now, if you happen to live out in the country like we do and you happen to have chickens or you have other animals and again you know those pesky little rats and rabbits that are around if you'll put some of the mint in sachet those little, little sachet packets and put those around in your house that will keep them out of the house and uh, now phil has another tray we did this um a few a few months ago where he combined cornmeal and baking soda and he put that together and put those um, in these little boxes. And so we've seen the rat population go way down. And what happens is those rats are going to hit and eat that. And they, the way their digestive system is set up, it will, they'll kind of implode from, from the inside out. So it's a good way to get rid of those pesky rats. Now, you can also use this tea, um, any kind of mint, um, especially to part cider vinegar as a hair rinse. So this is how you do it. I love vinegar anyway in my hair. I get compliments all the time and people say, you must spend a lot of money on your hair. I spend hardly anything at all on my hair. I just use go-to ingredients, the things that don't cost a lot, like your um, vinegar. Use white vinegar. Use the store brand. That that's, that's the way you do it. Okay, now back to the hair rinse. So you can add strong mint, especially rosemary tea, to one part cider vinegar. For a conditioning rinse, you can leave in or you can rinse out. Now, the vinegary smell dissipates while it's driving, uh, drying. I know a lot of you listeners have said, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put you know, vinegar in my hair. My hair is going to smell like a salad until I wash it again. I promise you, by the time your hair dries, you'll not smell the vinegar. I promise. Did you know that you can use this mint right here as a facial astringent? Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. So what you'll do is add some finely minced leaves to fresh peppermint or other mints to a cup of witch hazel. Store in a glass jar for about a week or more, shaking occasionally, and what you want to do 
and strain the herbs from the mixture after about a week. You can also use it as a mouthwash. What do you think people did 2,000 years ago before we had commercial mouthwash? So what you'll do is chop a quarter cup of fresh mint bee balm. You can also use lemon balm, basil, thyme, or you can do oregano leaves and infuse them in a quart of boiling water. Then when they're cool, you'll strain the herbs and you'll store it in the refrigerator. And I'm going to tell you, it is it's fabulous. Mint bath. So another, another thing you can do, so you can steep a handful of mint leaves in a pint of hot water for about 10 minutes and then you'll strain it. Add to the bath water for an invigorating stress-free soak. Another thing you can do is ease sunburn pain. Yeah, I'm the type. See how pale I am? I can get out in the sun, turn blood red, and then feel like crazy. It, it hurts. I mean, it burns. It goes crazy. You can use this to take away that sunburn pain. And guess what? After I get through the pain, I'm still as pale as I was before I began. Okay, so here's how you do it. So you'll make a strong peppermint tea. Um, my idea of strong and other people's idea of strong is two different things. So my regular tea. Now remember this, when you have dried peppermint or any kind of um, of mm, any type <laughs> of an herb when you dry it it's concentrated so if you're making tea and you normally would use say almost a handful of fresh mint leaves you'll only use about a teaspoon of now for most people I do two teaspoons but for most people would like to have maybe one teaspoon of the mint leaves so that just, just another little word of advice there. If you are going to use, again, the dried version, it's going to be highly concentrated. Okay, now let's talk about the sunburn pain. It's going to be here before you know it. So you can make a strong peppermint tea and refrigerate the mixture for several hours. And then to use it, just get the cotton pads and then put it over that sunburned area. And you'll get relief. I like to keep some made up in the refrigerator. If I know I'm going outside, that way when I come in, I can get relief right away. Did you know you could use it as a breath freshener? Absolutely you can. And think about this. You know, when you go to the grocery store, especially if you live in an upstairs apartment somewhere and you have to tote all those heavy groceries inside to your kitchen, and you've been to, there's a Dollar General on every corner, by the way. And so let's say you bought a big bottle, because you want to save money, you bought a big bottle of mouthwash. You got to walk upstairs with it, and there you go. It's heavy. Don't do that anymore. No, grow your own mint, because this is what you can do. You can get a few mint leaves and just chew on them. I mean, just get them, and they taste good. So you go ahead and chew on them. Sage teas and extracts have been used for centuries as a mouthwash for oral infections. Don't just chew mint herbs, um, by the way, if you're breastfeeding. Um, but small amounts of sage and peppermint can reduce your milk supply. Okay, now, number 10. You want to scent up a place like I've just done in my studio? It smells so good in here. I mean, it's, it's breathtaking. Keep your home smelling fresh by adding a few drops of mint essential oil to your favorite unscented cleaner. Or just take a cotton ball and dab that on a light bulb. Now, just a little bit. And, and, and if you're still using the regular light bulbs, you want to make sure that it's not hot. Because if you put that mint on there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to like explode. You don't want that to happen. So make sure that the bulbs are not hot when you do this. And I wanted to mention this to you, how you can make your own essential oil. It's so incredibly easy to do. Now, it's going to take a few weeks to, okay, to process it. I like to use a liquid oil, say like your olive oils or some of those. And because they're expensive, you can get the store brand. Okay, you don't have to get the most expensive one they have. Go on ahead and infuse it. So what you'll do is grab some mint. It's as strong as you want it. And I would probably use about five or six to a cup, five or six teaspoons of mint leaves or whatever essential you would like to use into the oil and you'll let that fuse and, and you'll then put it in a if you can put it in a color bottle such as your amber colors or maybe your royal blues or something like that because you need to keep this in a cold dark place and you'll need to also turn it upside down shake it for a couple of times you can just use just a regular canning jar to do that 
and I'm going to tell you just about two weeks you've made you've infused your own oil now you can also do a tincture to these as well you can use vodka or you can use um, you can use a couple sorts of other things such as your vinegar you can use that now it does take a few weeks for that to happen now you won't have the alcohol it'll dissipate and so anyway it, it makes a great great cleanser for your furniture um, it's good to use your lemon for that it smells just like your grandma's house with her lemon pledge you now your grandma used to use that lemon pledge I still get hooked up on that okay now let's talk about moth repellent scented sachets you know those cute little like organza bags you can get so what you can do is tie a few branches of strongly scented mint they can be peppermint sage lavender is awesome also your rosemary and your bee balm so you want to put those together or pull off a handful of leaves and just stuff them into the legs of an old nylon stocking you can do that i like to use a little organza bags and suspend by a string inside a garment bag and tuck that into the bags of stored maybe woolen clothing or just place in your drawer to let your clothes smell soak up that beautiful scent refresh periodically by the way to keep the scent very fresh you can also use mint as a bug repellent we talked about mice we'll talk about this so when ants come into the kitchen during the summer and they're gonna especially if you live out in the in the country like we do and you do your own canning and that type of thing so placing a few stems of mint gently crushed suspect nearby's entry points really does to two of your ants now you can replace the mint with fresh manure, uh, material every few days also keep pets flea free by stuffing a small pillow with fresh spearmint and thyme it's awesome and placing it near your pet's bed and this is just an absolute awesome natural natural you know how i am i'm a natural natural bug repellent okay now wanted to mention this before we go into a commercial break mint isn't only used to deter bugs it also attracts beneficial insects i know you think about those icky bugs and that kind of thing you got to have bugs especially if you have gardens you got to have the beneficial bugs and i'm talking about bees butterflies and they all love mint i mean the, at my outside i don't spend a whole lot of money on any of my plants because i propagate them and propagating is going to save you a ton of money but they love mint because it's rich in nectar and pollen and this benefits your pollinated plants and your crops as well now did you know that there is a medicinal use for mint plants mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about a lot of those plants in just within the next few weeks so mint has long been known as a herbal remedy easing queasy stomachs calming stress and anxiety and promoting restful sleep my grandmother used to do that both grandmothers so if they had a little bit of an upset stomach you know something like that they would go ahead and crunch on a few months um, mint leaves and that'd take care of it you know a lot of folks use peppermint like the little candies and, and those are really good too but i'm saying is if you want to avoid those calories of the sugar in the peppermint go ahead and get some mint leaves and chew on them peppermint tea has been long viewed as an excellent way to ease an upset stomach calm the digestive tract and alleviate indigestion gas and cramps mint has also been used for centuries in traditional medicine um, many maybe are being used let's go ahead and pause that for a second um, for human and veterinarian medicine you know whatever you've ever, have you ever heard of people say my dog got stung by a bee and they give the dog an a leave if a dog can take an a leave a dog can also take <laughs> your mint leaves you can also use these as insecticides or insect repellents and as antifungal or antibacterial um, protection for crop plants we talked about that just a few minutes ago and you know what Ooh, i got to go into a commercial break when we go get back from the commercial break we'll be right back and we're going to talk about more benefits of mint you'll be glad you watched this show Twin City East Car Sales has been serving drivers in the Northeast Alabama area for years with a quality selection of late model used cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks. 
On top of our extensive selection and competitive prices, we offer professional auto financing services for used car buyers of all credit levels. Whether you've just begun your search or you're ready to secure your next vehicle, at Twin City Used Car Sales, you will drive away with the vehicle of your dreams. The sales and finance staff at Twin City Used Car Sales looks forward to serving you, and you can apply for financing online before your visit to our used dealership in Gadsden, Alabama. Check us out on the web at TwinCityUsedCars.com or go by our location at 901 First Avenue, Gadsden, Alabama. We sincerely look forward to serving you. At La Mon's Mexican Restaurant, located in Henniger, Alabama, and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to lamonesmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. Jeff McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256 256- 996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com. No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need, towards a Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blunt Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256-634-2018. Okay, we are back. My name is Donna, and I am your host of Donna's Edge Talk Show, where truth matters. Thank you so much for watching every day, Monday through Friday. From 1 to 3 p.m. is I get to 
hang around with you for the weekend. By the way, wanted to mention this. If you have suggestions for shows, and a lot of you are having lots of suggestions about gardening shows, it could be politics, it could be how-to, because I love crafts, and I love to do that as well. But anything you would like for me to do a little research, I'll be glad to do that. Research is my middle name. You can send an email with whatever the subject is to Donna at Donna'sEdge.com. That's Donna at Donna'sEdge.com. We're talking about mint, and we're talking about peppermint, and all of the absolutely wonderful things that you can do with your mint leaves. Okay, so we we're talking about a potential plants. They're potent plants, by the way, so they're really good to add again to your garden. I, I may plant some potatoes. I may plant beans, peanuts, whatever. I don't want moles getting into my stuff, you know, and, and you don't either. You don't want slugs and those kinds of things coming in. So if you're going ahead and plant some mint, I would do a container. You know, you can actually get a container about eh, four or five inches, something like that, Propagate plants, going ahead just like I did at the very first part of the uh, of the show, and put those in a little bit of, of root compound, by the way. It only costs 5 $6, and it's going to last you, like, years. So going ahead and tuck that in there and water it often now. I would do this before you put it down in the garden. You can actually bury, if you want to just kind of keep that little plant up there, you can, or you can bury the whole container down in the ground. So you can do that as well. That's going to keep those little nasty pests away. That's what you want. Okay, now um, let's talk about how you can use manufacture your own manufacturing company, by the way, with mint to protect themselves, protect your family against harmful bacteria, viruses, and other assaults from the environments that they're involved in. Now, interestingly, there are studies that show Spearmint is even more beneficial to honeybees by cleaning out mites that can infect their hives. Hmm. I'm glad to know that. That's the first I heard of that because we have bees and you have to be really careful with mite, the mite population. They can come in and just take over a hive. I think I'm going to get some of this and sprinkle it down in the hive and see what happens. Let's try it. And I'll do a report and let you, I'll report to you and let you know how that turned out. Um, but use with careful. Okay, be careful. Use caution, okay? <laughs> if herbal medicine interests you, please approach the mints, especially their essential oils, their tinctures, and concentrated extracts. Make sure you do this with care. This goes for both over-the-counter and homemade remedies, okay? Um, and, and also, there are a few people out there who could be allergic to the mint leaves. So what you want to do is do a test on your wrist first, okay? This is where your pulse point is. This is where the blood circulation goes. And this would be, you can use it on your face, but then if you break out, you don't want it on your face. It'd be better to have it like right here, okay? <laughs> so people can't see it. So just do a little test. Get some of the mint leaves and maybe, you know, dip your finger in maybe some oil of some sort and then go ahead and dip your finger and then just rub it right here. Wait 24 hours and see if you have any kind of breakout. I would encourage you to do that first. I don't know of anybody who's allergic to mint leaves, but you never know that one person in a million could be. Now, although they've been used, mint and any of those others, um, for traditional healers around the world for centuries, most herbs have not gone, uh, have not undergone rigorous testing for safety and efficiency, especially in pregnant nursing women, children, elders, and people with chronic illnesses. Now, seek out much information you can from books, online sources, because I'm not telling you to listen to just me. Go out and do your own research about this, okay? You're going to be pleasantly surprised. And also talk to herbalists in your area. Um, I'm an herbalist. I just don't have the certificate yet, but I'm working on that. Okay, I'll get my certificate, and I'll let you know just as soon as it happens. So seek out as much info as you possibly can. Most herbalists recommend staying away from ingesting essential oils, um, such as medicines, unless under the care of... Um, and observation of a medical provider experience with herbal medicines. Now, out of an abundance of caution, herbalists also urge pregnant and breastfeeding um, women to be um, careful there as well. Okay, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Seek out as much information again, of course, um, with your books. Okay, now, many mint family species do contain potent Poly compounds that affect the um, the nervous system and can sometimes be dramatically. For example, sage and peppermint 
even as tea or food flavorings can reduce milk supply in breastfeeding women. We talked about that a few minutes ago. Now, the essential oil of pennyroyal, historically used to induce menstruation, um, can be lethal if ingested in a large enough dose to accompany those purposes. So be really careful out there. Now, some mint contains this poly compound. Now, almost among the most potent, there's a salvia um, whose use and or sale has been banned in a lot of nations. And about half the United States has banned some of that as well. So again, now I want you to do your homework and, you know, go out there and do some research on your own. And that's what I try to tell everybody anyway. You know, when you're watching the news or you know, whatever you're watching on television, it could be YouTube, it could be whatever, uh, you know, watch those things. That's fine. And some of them are just just downright wrong. People lie and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes it's just kind of funny, something to just laugh at. But do your own research about any information that you get, whether it be me or anybody else. I just want you to do your own research because every human body is different. You know, no two humans look alike unless uh, there's going to be something different even between twins. I knew a set of twins that one twin had a mole on her face. It's actually right into there, but the other one didn't. And that's the only way you could detect one from the other one. So I don't care how you look. There's no two people that are going to look exactly the same. Now let's talk about my favorite part of this, and that's actually growing mint. So you may have heard that mint takes over a garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've experienced that several times. It's mainly spearmint that gives a lot of mints a bad name. And this is what I happen to have, spearmint. I like it because it's the strongest. Peppermint pretty much well stays its place um, because their little, their little leaves are kind of short and shallow. Also, peppermint rarely produces viable seeds, so you won't find it popping up in different garden beds. Or maybe a bird, you know, picks up some and then, you know, they do their business over your flower bed and then all of a sudden you've got mint everywhere. That's happened to me before. Okay, now wild spearmint is the real bully, the wild variety. Okay, developing an enormous network of tough quarter inch thick rhizomes under the flower beds and then spilling out into a large section of the lawn, which is what we've cut down a lot of chocolate and mint, sending up a new plant every inch or two from the underground nodes. I know we've pulled up just tons of peppermint out of the yard before because, I mean, it was cut with lawnmower. Then it gets out, it propagates, it goes like all over the place. But if you are cultivating spearmint in your garden, just give this attractive ground cover plenty of room to spread. Let it do its thing. Now in the ground, it's ideal to grow spearmint in its own bed. Give it some privacy. You can get those little kids' tubs, you know, as big as you want it. If you want to raise a lot of mint, which is what I do, put it in its own little tub, like a little plastic tub. Now, the only thing I suggest you do, you need to put some holes in the bottom of that little plastic tub and then put your dirt in and then go ahead and propagate, you know, put your plants in or your seeds, whatever you're going to do. I always grow my seeds, though, before I plant them in the garden. And you don't have to have a greenhouse to do that. You can do this in your own house. Now, what you can do, oh, I got ahead of myself right here, um, <laughs> give it room to spread, or plant mint in a container, such as a terracotta pot near the kitchen window. Now, in the ground, it's ideal to grow spearmint in its own bed. But if you want to grow mint in a bed with other herbs or plants, consider sinking a deep bucket or tub without holes into the soil and plant into that. Otherwise, spearmint will choke out all the other plants in the bed. Okay, it loves to get all of the attention. Okay, now when cold weather approaches, plants can be lifted and brought indoors in their own pots to give fresh leaves throughout the first part of the winter. Note it's best to grow mint from cuttings, roots, or transplants. The mint seed does not come true to type sometimes. Okay, I'm going to, I've got just a few minutes left, so I'm going to go on ahead and talk to you also about Mint Growing Guide, and this is, oh, my book's coming in. Yay. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I love to read. Okay, now let's talk about four homemade bug repellents for your skin. 
Um, I know a lot of people buy um, Skin So Soft, and Skin So Soft is absolutely great. It's from Avon, and a lot of people I know have horses and, and, and maybe show horses and dogs, and they'll use it on them, and it keeps the dogs, um, they'll stand still during a, a dog show, and then also if you have your horses and they're in some type of a, a beautiful show, it'll keep them from swagging their tails, which is something that you need to have it as well. And so you can also use herbs, which is a, a fabulous thing that you can do as well. Um, looks like, I don't know if the internet is off. Um, so anyway, it's not going where I need it to go. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about propagating. Okay, so if you have a friend, uh, and let me tell you this. In my car, I try to remember always to use my little clippers, my little, you know, um, kind of like little scissors. And they, they come from Fiskars. I love those things. And by the way, Fiskars has a fabulous, fabulous. If, if something happens, I don't care how old their, their, their scissors or, or any of their things are, their tools are. If you're having an issue with them, all you have to do is go to Fiskars.com, F-I-S-C-A-R-S.com. So I like to use their, their products. And however old it is, if it's not working right, all you have to do is just take a picture of it. And then if there's a serial number or something like that on it, you want to go on ahead also and put that down in the description. But take a picture, tell them what the problem is. They won't, they won't even ask you to send it back. Fiskers.com. And what they'll do is, go, is send you a replacement. Okay, so I wanted to get that out of the way. But I like to travel with my Fiskers, okay? And so if I'm at a friend's house or... You know, I happen to go by somebody's house and they've got a plant that I would love to have a cutting from. Or if you just want to go out in the woods, which is something that I can't wait to do once we start getting warmer weather. And you want to propagate something, easy to do. Now, if you wanted to propagate, say, a peach tree. Okay, so I have some peach trees and I'm in the process of propagating the limbs on them right now. Don't get the big ones, okay? Don't get them that are like huge. You want to get the little spirally, the small ones. I would say less than a half an inch at least um, around in the branch. So you want to cut one off. Make sure that it has a couple of little bumps on it. And what I mean by the bumps, that's where potential um, leaves can be. Go ahead and cut it. It doesn't have to be anything huge, nothing great big forever so you want it maybe three four inches long i mean that's all you need you can go up to six inches if you want to but what i like to do and i can't show you i'll just use my ink pen right here for an example so let's just say i wanted to well let's use this because it'll be a little bit bigger so let's just say pretend this is a limb has a couple of tiny little leaves you don't want like a huge branch but something kind of like that what you'll do is get your knife and you'll want to go right around the bottle of that Kind of shave it just a little bit, but let me tell you something that's worked with me. Don't shave it all the way off. So just kind of leave a few pieces of that branch, of that bark. You want to leave just a little bit down here at the bottom of that. Because guess what? That's where you're going to get your stronger, your stronger roots from. Because here's, this is, just pretend this is a, let's pretend this is a plant. Okay, so this is going to be, your roots down here. So let's just pretend you got these little jaggly roots down here. Okay, the roots have to be, I mean, they've got to be in good health form. Okay, so you got those little little roots down there. Now, if it's a big one, it's going to have a big tap root, but we're talking about the smaller plants right now. Okay, so that's going to be your roots. This is going to be your stem. We'll pretend this right here is the stem. So if your roots are healthy, then the stem is going to be healthy. Now, if you've got a stem that looks like it's not in really good shape, then it's probably the problem with the roots. Okay, now, let's say you've got healthy roots. You're not really sure about the stem. You've got your flower or your leaves that are coming out right here, okay? So you've got this going, but it looks kind of wilty looking. Maybe the leaves don't look that good. they got a wilt look look to them or maybe they're turning brown or whatever you got two possibilities they said they're going to be the roots down here that is having an issue maybe a little sickly or it could be the stem and it could be the roots are healthy you just got an issue right here with the stem which is not producing the good flowers or the good leaves all right so make sure everything is healthy okay which we're going to propagate 
Now, what I like to do, make sure you keep all of your containers. Uh, and, and by the way, I save everything unless it just gets so crushed up, I have to throw it away. So I save all of my small containers, every, every container, but my small containers for if I want to propagate or I want to put seeds in them. So I've got my stem. I went on ahead and I cut it. By the way, cut it at kind of an angle when you cut it off of the tree or the bush or whatever. And by the way, I have, we went on ahead and cut back on the blueberries and, and, and all of the fruit trees. So we did that. And of course, you know me, I had to save it. I had to save most of the limbs. So you cut it kind of at an angle, kind of like that. And then before you put it into the dirt, okay, you want to go on ahead again, use that knife and go all just kind of down this way, but leave that part, leave the shaving on it. Again, that's going to have it to root. Now, I've got my rooting compound. You can get a gel. I like the powder better. It seems to stay on a little bit better. That's just my preference. I know other gardeners say, well, I would, I would live by the gel. And that's fine if that's easy for you. But I like to use the powder. Now, a little a little thing of powder this big is going to last you for a couple, maybe even three years. Um, me, it doesn't last that long because I'm constantly propagating. Um, but so you want to dip it down into that little, and just dip it, just a tiny, it won't take much. And then what you'll do is kind of, kind of do this, tip it, and let that excess fall back down into the jar. You don't want to waste it. It doesn't cost much, five, six dollars or something like that. And, um, and it's just going to give it a boost. Now, I went on ahead and I did that. I have my soil ready. And by the way, I would, I would definitely use some kind of manure in it, compost or whatever. And with really good, don't reuse dirt, okay? Because it could be, if you reuse it, it could be there was an issue with that dirt. Maybe it has some kind of disease in it or whatever. All that old stuff goes in the compost pile. So you want to get fresh and new. I've just, from experience, I found that works. So you're going ahead, a hole, you want to, you want to kind of poke a little hole, just like you saw me do in the video just a few minutes ago, poke a little hole, and then going ahead and put that into the dirt, into the dirt. Now, you don't want to pack it too much, but you got to pack it some, you know, and then that way when you water it, well, then it's going to hold straight up. You don't want it to start leaning over because you put way too much and you didn't put it in deep enough, or maybe the hole was too big and you didn't. You pat it good enough. Just pat it. That's all you got to do. And just kind of keep an eyeball on it. And if you if you tap, let's say two days later, I would suggest every day for at least a week. But anyway, let's say you only got around to it maybe the third, the second or the third day. If you tap on it and it's still moist, you're okay. But now if you tap on it and you feel a lot of hardness there on that soil, you better hurry up. And put some water on it. Now let's talk for a minute about watering your plants. Don't douse it. Okay, <laughs> I've done that before. If you put way too much dirt on it, you're going to cause some issues. It's going to be a big problem. You, first of all, you're going to create root rot on your plants. It's best, and let's pretend this is your little compound right here. This is something that you're going to plant your, your seeds in or your propagation from. It's best if you have there's holes down the bottom. You need that. That's that's you can't don't plant anything without some holes down the bottom, because that water needs to drain. If it just sets on that root again, root rot, then you're gonna have a dead plant. I like to have little holes down there, and then I like to get a little plate. Um, and a lot of your plants and salt come with saucers. You can do that. But how about have a saucer on it? Maybe just something you found at a yard sale or at Shepherd's Cove thrift shop. And go ahead and set it on there. That way, that water can drain down. Now, if you're using something like a, if you're planting something like a woody kind of a plant, like lavender. I told you about my lavender. I went on ahead and, and cut 120 um, of the little little lavender parts. And I'm thinking, I'm going to just be tickled to death if only 10 of them come up. Well, guess what? All 120 of them came up. They all, they did a great job. And so I went on ahead and I propagated those. But now with a woody, woody, kind of like a lavender type plant, you get these little gravels. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. So you can get these little gravels and put them down in the bottom of your container and then put your dirt on top of that. That will help with drainage as well. 
And uh, so that's just another food for thought. With woody things like your lavender, your rosemaries, and things like that, they grow well. Think of Italy. Okay, think of Italy. Okay, lavender grows like crazy in Italy. I mean, you, there, are, there are, I mean, literally farms that have absolutely nothing but lavender on it. Now, my sand is very, very sandy, okay? So that's my soil. Very sandy. And also, it, it drains crazy. However, that's a good alternative to lavender. Lavender love rocks, and they like sandy soil. But now you need to have control over that sandy soil as well. Okay, now enough about that. I wanted to talk to you about how you can buy one plant, get a really nice plant, something like a beautiful fern, and turn it into four or five or maybe even six plants. So buy that pretty one. Now when you buy them, sometimes they're already root bound. And that's why people buy, they buy these ferns and they say, I just can't grow a fern. You can grow a fern. What it is, you bought it and it's root bound. So what you can do is get a butcher knife, a big knife now. It's going to have to be something to cut right into it. And you can actually, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to buy a fern, okay? Because I need some more ferns out front anyway. And so I'm, I'm going to buy one, I'm going to show you. So what you'll do is cut it in half. You're not going to damage it. You're not hurting the roots. So you want to cut that that beautiful, beautiful plant in half. Then what you can do is cut. I mean, you can get a lot of plants out of one and they grow like crazy. So go on ahead and cut it in half and then cut it in quarters. Then if you want to, you can go on ahead and cut those quarters in half. And you've got a bunch of plants right there. So then you'll go on ahead and get your container, whatever you want to put it in. I think there's nothing more beautiful than ferns at the front of a big old porch. And I've got a front porch that goes all the way from one side to the other. I'm excited about that, so I can't wait. And again, we'll have a show. I'll show you how to do it. So the next thing you want to do is you want to kind of clean those roots just as much as you can, but be very careful cleaning those roots. You want to kind of tap them just a little bit. Then what you're going to do is have your container ready. You want to make sure that you have all the beneficial you need in it. You can go ahead and put 20-20-20 in there, and what I mean by that is, is your, your plant food. They have to eat just like you do, so put your plant food in there. And then mix it up really well. Okay, you want to kind of create a hole down in the, the middle of it. Not all the way down now because you've got to have some dirt down at the bottom of that. You can put some, they don't put big gravels, but put some of those little tiny rocks in the bottom of it if you want to mimic Italy. Okay, then you're going ahead, not, not many, just uh, about a quarter of an inch, just ba basically barely covering the bottom. That's, that's all you want, just basically covering it. Put your dirt in. Go ahead and put, um, by the way, go ahead and wet those roots. I would suggest you do that. They don't just douse it in water. What you want to do is get a spray bottle with water in it. Shake it really good and then just spray the roots down there in the bottom. they got to be damp, okay? Then go ahead and put it down into that, in whatever your container is. Then what you want to do is fill in dirt all the way around it and the sides, okay? Now, you want to go on ahead and press down in, see right here, the edges. Pretend this is your container. You want to go ahead and press that dirt down around the edges. Kind of, just kind of turn it around and just press it. And then your plant goes in here. You got Remember, you got dirt down here at the bottom. You want to fill in and put more dirt. Okay. And, well, they tell us soil. If I were going to class right now, to the Master Gardener's class, they'd be slapping my hand for saying that. So what you <laughs> want to do is go ahead and put that down in there and then just gently put your soil on top of it and gently press. What a lot of folks do, now you you got to have some compression on there, okay? Otherwise, when you water it, the water's just going to wash out of the way. So what you want to do is gently press it. And then that way you got to be thinking about the roots. Remember, the root is the most important part of the whole plant. If the root is damaged, you're not going to have a plant or it's going to be sickly looking and it's never going to be the way you want it to be. So again, take care of the root. Gently press the soil once you get it in there. And then just kind of spray it just a little bit with more water. You need to check on it. Don't overwater it because again, you're going to create root rot and you're going to have nothing but a but a hot mess. <laughs> okay, this is the end of the show. I hope you learned something. And um, I'm, I'm just telling you things I learned what not to do. I'm no authority by all means, but 
I have learned from mistakes, and then I'm carrying those on to you. Thank you so much for watching Donna's Edge. I'm Donna, your host, and you can find us on the radio, icradio.media. You can also find us on television, channel 182, on Charter Communications, Abundant Television, found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. And please don't forget the podcast at thenewscasters.com. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. My towels solved the problem that we've all had with towels. You go into the stores and they feel lotiony and soft, but then you get them home and they wind dry you. That's why I made my towels. They actually work, they're soft, and they absorb. And now I'm excited to announce two brand new lines of my towels. What makes them the best towels ever is they're now made with 100% long staple Shapir cotton. This is a combed ring spun cotton that makes my towels even softer and more absorbent than ever. And now you get a six piece set for an amazing introductory sale price as low as $29.98. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get my towels for only $29.98. Or you can get my designer premium line for just $20 more. Either way, you save 50% now on all my towels. They actually work. What a concept. This offer won't last long, so please order now. MyPillow.com The only place I buy my beef is Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama. Their cattle is born and raised on their ranch, grass and grain fed, and you can feel confident when you serve your family and friends because their beef is all natural and no antibiotics or hormones are added. You can buy whole beef or perhaps go in with family or friends and buy half. Their customer service is number one as they take care of the delivery to their local processor and can deliver to your home for a small added fee. They also offer herd replacement heifers. I always call Lone Tree Ranch in Collinsville, Alabama for my beef specialty recipes and cookouts, and you can too. Food shortages are increasing, so buy local by calling 256-523-6462. That's 256-523-6462. Are you ready? We all wonder what tomorrow will bring, but the future lays itself at the feet of the prepared and surrenders to the will of the persistent. It's not easy, but today shapes you so you can shape tomorrow. With Northeast Alabama Community College, when the future asks if you're ready, you can answer. Yes. Begin your future at Northeast Alabama Community College. Donna's Designs offers a line of handmade memorial, wedding, and keepsake jewelry that launched back in 1970. I'm a self-trained jewelry designer, and I will work closely with you to create unique designs you can love and treasure for years to come. Whether that be flowers that were used in a funeral arrangement or stones you found on the beach at a memorable trip, call me at 256-659-4319, and let's think of the possibilities. Twin City Used Car Sales has been serving drivers in the Northeast Alabama area for years with a quality selection of late model used cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks. On top of our extensive selection and competitive prices, we offer professional auto financing services for used car buyers of all credit levels. Whether you've just begun your search or you're ready to secure your next vehicle, at Twin City Used Car Sales, you will drive away with the vehicle of your dreams. The sales and finance staff at Twin City Used Car Sales looks forward to serving you, and you can apply for financing online before your visit to our used dealership in Gadsden, Alabama. Check us out on the web at TwinCityUsedCars.com or go by our location at 901 First Avenue, Gadsden, Alabama. We sincerely look forward to serving you.